Angling is a series of choices from an infinite number of options. Some simple, like what's your target species, to the complexities of understanding fish location on a seasonal basis. Then there's the myriad of presentation options. It's as mental of a game as physical. Each challenge is different, but the basic process remains the same. For angling is like solving a living, breathing puzzle. And to see the big picture, you need the fishing edge. Look at the size of that pike. Wow. <laughs> Look at the size of that pike. Oh. We probably caught about, how many would you say we it's caught over, today? Well, I think we've got over 100 fish today. We've caught well over 100 fish today, and the average size has been about this right here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty good day. <laughs> there we go, Daniel. Right under the boat, I just marked them. Did ya? Yep. Ooh, nice fish. Wow. Ooh, yeah. Getting that heavy cover, <laughs> yep, man. in the cover. Oh, he is tough. Oh, hey, <laughs> look at that beauty. Isn't that a gorgeous bass? And this rig is covered in weeds, but Dan and I have had an incredible day catching fish on somewhat of a unique system, one that's been developed for a long time, but a slight modification to it. We're gonna share with you in just a little bit on how we caught so many <laughs> of these big largemouth bass. I'm gonna get her back. Oh, Dan, this looks like a beauty. Yeah, right. It's not a concrete ramp we're putting in right off the road. You can see we got our little one boat here on a roller trailer, so it's easy to access these little gems. And today, Dan and I are gonna try a technique that's a little, well, it's a little bit different, let's just say that. High sky, sunny, perfect day for finesse, but there's a twist to it. I'm excited to get in this thing. Let's this do looks it. awesome. All right, you wanna get on the motor and I'll you got unleash it. the beast? Some would say days like these are one in a million, but are they? Research is epic to get on good bites. Modern technology like Hummingbird's 360 imaging and Minn Kota's iPilot Link are extremely powerful tools once you find the fish. But the question is, how do you find the little hidden gold mines? Well, the only answer is time. Time spent doing research, talking to locals, the internet, or maybe just looking at maps. Tar that way? The point is you gotta lace up your boots, have a few failures, and never quit hunting. Getting on great bites is trial and error, and being willing to spend the time and gas on new adventures. That's Ooh. Here we go. Oh. You got one too? Ooh. Nope. Nice. Ooh, nice fish. Oh, oh man. This fish came out like Woo. gangbusters. Look at that. Ooh, Dano. Another I one? I got a feeling this is gonna be a good start <laughs> to the day. Look at this, huh? Wow, 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 wow. wow. Oh, and he threw my, threw my little water worm off the hook there, huh? Look at that. That is a beautiful, beautiful largemouth bass. And I wanna show you what Dan and I are using to catch these beauties. Let me get it back. It's a drop shot but it's a little bit of a modified version of a drop shot. A lot of people call this speed shotting or power shotting, and it's taking the idea, the concept of a drop shot, and simply upsizing it. Dan's got another one. We just pulled into this little honey of a lake, and we're gonna see how effective. Oh, this is a big one, I think. Wow, how effective power coming shotting up, can really coming be. Coming up, coming up, coming out. Woo. It. Whoa, it's a hog, Dan. Wow, yeah. It's a hog. Woo. <laughs> that was way up there, Jerry. You may want to flip, okay. flip up a little bit sure. shallower. Yeah, I'm not afraid to get up in there. Oh, well, look at this Wow, guy. look at that thing. That is a tank. That is a big bass. Whoa, 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 whoa. it's kicking your butt. <laughs> well, that's a good start, Dan. I would say. Oh, let me get this guy in, take a peek at him. Wow, Jared, look at the size of this That's guy. a donkey. That is a donkey. Dan. Look at that. Whoa. <laughs> oh, 
Wow. <laughs> is that a bruiser or what, man? Boy, what a healthy, healthy fish. Yeah, this is gonna be fun, man. Power shotting or speed shotting. We'll get this guy back in the water. Not a bad double up. No. Closed captioning provided by Fishoflage. Yes. boy, Dan, good fish. It looks like he's yeah, kicking he's your butt. Up. He's coming up. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna throw right in there because I bet there's more. Yeah. Nice fish, nice fish. Wow. That's all she's got. You get one, one, or, ooh, one or two little burns out of her. That fish just came up and pecked it like a bluegill. Oh, you got another oh, yeah, one? We're doubled up, buddy. Boy, we're on them. This uh, drop shot system is a rear weighted system as opposed to a weight forward system. Let's take a look at the dynamics between the two. This could be kind of confusing, so let's clarify. A weight forward system is a delivery mechanism where the weight and the pull point are in the same location. Pretty simple, right? Like a jig or a Texas rig or even a Carolina rig. Now a rear weighted system is where the weight is below the pull point, like a drop shot. Now over the years, many anglers have made modifications and adaptations to this rear weighted delivery system for many different species. We have caught many perch through the ice on a rear-weighted system. Now this one was drawn into the, the pounding action in the bottom. I was just pounding that mud. Smama bass are suckers when it comes to this style of presentation. How about bluegills? We tore up these giant gills using this very same system, only downsized to fit the species. So this system here is a real go-to for fishing deep weeds. I've got a piece of tungsten here that's pegged. And it's just your standard Texas rig, about three quarters of an ounce. But the thing with this particular body of water is the, the as clear as it is, we've got sand grass that grows out to about 18 feet. And it's that kind of stringy grass that grows on the bottom. And it grows up about this high. So when I'm fishing a Texas rig, the bait plunges right into those weeds. So if the fish don't get it on the fall, the bait disappears. It's out of their strike zone unless they happen to hit it when it's flying up. And they've got to be pretty aggressive for it. So that's one of the reasons that this particular system is so effective. So this is about maybe the height of the weeds is say right about there, eight, 10 inches. And then this just sits right above the weeds in their face. So the bait is always in the strike zone. It's always visible to the fish. And it seems like that can be the difference between catching a pile of big fish and getting a bite here and there when the bait's falling. There we go. Yep, coming up, coming up, coming up. Getting right in where, where he was. Oh, nice fish, Dan. I got on him. You got on him. That's a nice one. That's a beauty. Yeah, it is. That's Easy. a good fish. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, you wanted to pull it down, man. Those fish are not hitting it like they're not no, clubbing it like. Uh, here, come on out, buckaroo. Ooh, good yeah, fish. Yeah, that's a nice one. That's why this is so effective. You can just let it sit in their face. Yeah, right. <clears throat> you know, we were talking about uh, the delivery system and why this thing is so effective. You know, this bait just sits right in that strike zone, right where they're at, and they just look at it, look at it, look at it. And plus, this thing's out of the weeds, you know what I mean? So you're not getting tangled up in the weeds all the time. It's uh, extremely effective. And boy, they like it a lot. There we go. Boy, that's a big, beautiful bass that here. That is a beautiful bass. We'll let so it go. pretty in this clear water. It's like that. Let that guy go. We didn't catch any, like, we didn't get any, like, five pound fish, but four, four and a quarter pounders, like a lot of three to four and a quarter pound fish. Mm -hmm. Ooh, nice. There he goes. That was cool. I saw him in the depth finder. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I like when you can see them and then catch them. Well, that's a little bigger than I thought it was. Huh? <laughs> that's a nice fish. He came right under the boat. I saw that fish sitting down there, and that's a classic way to catch fish on a drop shot is sight fishing with electronics and, and deep water. But I, our primary focus today is to cast the bait into cover and pull it out with the drop shot or the power shot in this case works equally well 
has a vertical presentation, so it's very versatile. You can cast it, you can fish it vertical, and it comes through cover amazingly. There we go. Likely going. Dan's got another one. In that same school, we'll see if you're, see if you're, oop. Oh, nice. <laughs> so fun. Talk about effective. I mean, just yeah. numbers of fish. Numbers oh, of numbers Oh, this is a decent fish. one, That's man. That's a nice fish, too. Yeah. 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 Yeah, boy. Whoa. Interesting. We saw the cover, and then we saw the bluegills. Yeah. And guess what? I gonna... Boy, that water is just gin clear, gin man. Clear. You can see that fish down there five feet. Look, he's got that flutter worm tucked in his, in his beak. Oh, that's a nice one, Jeremy. Beautiful fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look at that fish on a flutter worm. Let's take a look at some of the riggings and the soft baits for uh, power shotting. Traditional drop shot rigging incorporates small, subtle soft baits for tempting largemouth, smallmouth, perch, bluegill, and other species that get finicky at times especially in clear water, during cold fronts, or faced with heavy fishing pressure. The lifelike twitching and pulsating of miniature soft baits looks just like real forage items and is impossible to resist. Today we're going to the opposite extreme using oversized soft baits like Trigger X 10 inch hammer worms, 6 inch big mows, and 6 inch flutter worms to trigger big bass into striking. These larger baits do a couple of different things. First and foremost, they are physically bigger than traditional drop shot plastics. And when you're fishing in and around soft cover like weeds, you want to make a lot of waves. So bigger is better. Secondly, Trigger X aggression formula is enhanced with pheromones that stimulate the feeding of predators. Then once a fish strikes the bait, the salt enhancement kicks in and these fish will not let the bait go. You will notice our hook sets today are more like we are fishing with live bait in a circle hook. It's a simple reel down and lift. Anytime yeah. you're out bass fishing, you got to make sure you got plenty of weight because you're fishing on the bottom a lot of the time. I of course carry heavy tungsten flipping sinkers. These are great if you're in really dense cover. I've got them from an ounce and a half down to real small sizes. I always make sure I carry plenty of bullet sinkers and lead. And then I've got beads for Carolina rigging. I've got all the stops I need if I'm gonna do any pegging or anything like that. And then of course the system we're using today, I've got drop shot sinkers and, and I carry a couple different styles. I've got the, uh, the ball shape or sometimes they, they sell them as a teardrop as well. But this is for fishing in areas with a little cleaner bottom and it gives you a little more surface contact with the bottom so you can feel what the composition is like. And then with what like we're fishing today, we're fishing with these tungsten cylinder shaped drop shot sinkers and these work really great for going through cover. You can see how thin they are and they go through cover extremely well. So make sure you always have a good selection of lead or weights on board anytime you're heading out bass fishing because having good bottom contact is a key to getting big bass. Now the other part of the system is of course having a good hook selection and I carry hooks for any style of bass fishing or catfish fishing or walleye fishing or smallmouth fishing on board. I've got swim bait hooks, I've got live bait hooks, I've got wacky worm style hooks, weedless wacky worm style hooks, flipping hooks, and of course today the system of choice has been this VMC spin shot. You can see how this worm hook, this extra wide gap worm hook sits on a little piece of wire shank with a couple loops in it and that's the system. It keeps it from spinning and twisting your line when it's on the on the line so it's a good good system but make sure anytime you're out on the water you never know what you're going to run into so carry a good selection like this i'm loaded with plenty of vmc hooks and plenty of weight to get to the bottom You know, right now we're fishing out of uh, a 1725 Pro Guide. This is one of our the smaller boats in our fleet, and it's got a 75 Merc on it. It's got a roller trailer, you know, so this lake is a, a small little gem. And, uh, ooh, big fish, big fish. Boy, he just picked it up so subtly. Whew. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you, Dan, yeah, but, but it is true, another. fishing out of this little, little Lund here. And having that roller trailer, it does open up so many more opportunities to get into, into little lakes. It's great having the big 
Pro-V and the big Predator boat, but you want to find some off-the-wall honey holes. Having a little boat like this with a little tiller motor on it, it's unbelievable the water you can access. Oh, Dan's got another one. Yep. We're a couple hours in and we, we can't even count how many fish we've caught, Dan. <laughs> yeah, it's silly. These fish have... Like they don't know said, what a lure is. They've never seen lures before. It's like fishing in the Amazon. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's amazing. You know, when you start doing some, some research, you can find these little gems. And uh, boy, the fishing can be just fabulous. It's not a particularly big one, but we've caught some real big ones. We've caught numbers. I mean, just the, the bite is off the charts. The bite is absolutely off the charts today. We are wrecking them. And I spend a lot of time sniffing out these little lakes, either in, either in this little Lund Pro Guide or I've got a small Lund John boat, but interestingly enough, these lakes, they see absolutely no pressure. It's really like doing a flying trip to Canada when you put on in these primitive accesses. But fish are still fish. I've gone to so many places where I know there's lots of big bass. They're not pressured at all, and you can have a very, very challenging bite. And today, if we were to go through this, this lake right now, I bet if we were fishing half ounce jigs and we were fishing Texas rigs on the bottom or we were cranking, chances are the bite would be oh, slow. It wouldn't be like this is. You still need to finesse fish into biting, even in the most unpressured bodies of water. This might be a real tank. This feels like a big, big fish. Oh, and it is, it is. Nice. Big, big wow. bass. Whoa, whoa, Holy whoa, whoa. Moly. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, Dan. Dan, this is turning into what I'm just going to have to call a phenomenal day of bass fishing. Man, it just gets pegged with this spin are. shot rig. It's amazing how well you stick those fish. Unbelievable. It's absolutely unbelievable. I'm just kind of holding the boat right now. The weed edge is in 15 feet, and I'm just using the Minn Kota to kind of hold us in about 16, 17, and we're just pitching up right now to that edge, and every once in a while I'll see a fish on the electronics, it's sitting right underneath the boat. You can drop on them or just, the water's so clear, we're trying to get a little distance and pitch up and crack them. I'm not gonna use that one, I'm gonna get a new bait. This is really fun. Got fit. Looks like a good fish. Look at it. It's coming up. He's coming up. Nice fish. Another oh. nice beauty. You don't want to set the hook. Well, I haven't been setting the hook. No, Those fish come real. up and they're just. Ooh, yeah. Nice fish. Nice fish. That, uh. <laughs> the Trigger X has got, you know, it's got that salt in it and those fish will hit that thing and they just. It, they just chew on it. They don't let go of it. You know, they'll take it and pull it off, and you're sitting there just feed them, feed them, feed them, and it just feels like a little bit of weed weight on there. And then you reel back and crank them, and you get a big bass like that. Beauty. Another Jared, nice why don't you fish. talk about uh, some of the presentation or the, the rods, reels, line, and the specifics on your presentation? The rod and reel outfit that Dan and I are using today is a is a combo that we use for a lot of different bass fishing techniques. Texas rigging, throwing jigs, say a half ounce and less, and of course, power shotting. This happens to be a six foot 10, medium heavy, fast action, Lindner's Angling Edge Technique Series rod, along with the Quantum XO Reel. This is an ultra light combo, really smooth and easy to cast. And I've got a 7.3 to one gear ratio on the reel. And the reason for that is I wanna be able to pick up slack I'm, I've got a bow in the line most of the time when I'm working this bait. That just lets the bait sit and flutter and undulate. And when I do get bit, like right there, I just want to be able to reel up and stick them. I got That's em. the whole system. Ooh, I got a tank, Dan. You got one too? <laughs> yeah. Doubled oh. up. Ooh. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. I know. Hang on. I can't see mine yet. Here, here Ooh, comes mine. Oh, they're pretty close. Yeah. I think I got you beat, though. I think I got you beat. Double bubble. whammy. Look at this. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. Mine can eat yours. <laughs> oh, mine just got off. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, Boy, look at the size of this so tank. so much fun, man. Look at the size of that fish. Hey, if you've never tried drop shotting, 
or you've never tried power shotting, it's something you've got to try, especially on high sunny skies. It's an absolutely dynamite technique for catching lots of bass and some real tanks. You know, I don't remember where I got this, but I cut it out of some publication someplace and it's sitting by my Bible. Uh, every once in a while, I pick it up and read it. I think you're going to enjoy it. It's titled, Good Morning, This is God. And then it goes on to say, the author, unknown. Today, I'll be handling all your problems. Please remember that I don't need your help. If the devil ha happens to deliver a situation that you can't handle, don't attempt to resolve it. Kindly put it into something for God to do box. It'll be addressed in my time, not yours. Once the matter is placed into the box, don't hold on to it nor remove it. Holding on or removal will delay the resolution of your problem. If it's a situation that you think you're capable of handling, please consult me in prayer to be sure that it's the proper resolution. Because I don't sleep nor do I slumber, there's no need for you to lose any sleep. Please rest, my child. If you, need, if you need to contact me, I'm only a prayer away. My prayer line's open 24 hours a day. I love you and always be with you wherever you go. Love God. Pretty neat, huh? It's hard for us to get our natural mind around God's unconditional love. Think about that. Unconditional love, it's impossible for us to understand that but it's real. Hey, from all of us here at The Edge, have a good fishing season. We'll see you in the water.